Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock and ElectronicLessons.com. What I have here before you today is a six digit 24 hour digital clock. It's also a countdown timer, a stopwatch, and uh, the 24 hour clock has a an alarm function, a timed alarm function, so you can set this up so you can to wake you up in the morning. We've got a piezo buzzer here, a regulator, our microprocessor, our six digits, our colons using LEDs, our function buttons, and a bunch of transistors and resistors. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to use this. I'm going to show you each function. Then I'm going to show you how to put it together. So first of all, we're going to learn how to switch the time. So right now it says 10, 10, 12. So press the S3 button, or rather S1 button, once to change function. This is our function change button. If you press S2, the hour changes, so let's set it, set it to 7.30 a.m. Press S3 to change the minute. So it's 7.30. And press S1 again. It'll bring you into the next function, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep pressing it until it brings us back to time readout. So there we go, 7.30. Now I'm going to show you how to, how to change the alarm. So we want our alarm to start buzzing at 7.32 a.m. We're going to press S1 twice. All four LEDs that simulate the cones light up. We use S2 to change the hour. S1 to change the minute. Now I'm going to press S1 until it brings us back to the time. So now we've got 34 seconds, or 7.31 and 37 seconds. So when the time turns 7.32, the alarm will go off. So we'll just skip ahead here. And here we go. Now that uh, the alarm will go off on its own, and you can you can turn it off manually. Uh, so now let's go to our countdown timer. So you press S1 three times, and you'll see this little you see the uh, first second digit light up. So First of all, you can press, to increment that, you can press S3 as many times as you want. Then press S2 when you're done with that digit. Now you can increment the second digit using S3. And you can keep incrementing it. If you don't want to add in an, uh, a certain number for each digit, just pre keep pressing S2 until all six digits are filled out. Now if, when you want it to start counting down, press S2. Now, when the alarm goes off, press S2 again to turn off the alarm. But here's another interesting thing: is you can actually interface this with your microcontroller here because you get the t you can take the tone that's activating the p the uh, piezo buzzer here and interface that signal with your microcontroller. So when the con countdown timer elapses, you can trigger another set of events using your other circuit, which is pretty neat. So we'll just uh, fast forward here. Annoying, huh? <laughs> It'll do the job. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to press S3 again to bring us into the next function. And this is our stopwatch. So press S2 to start, S2 to stop, and S3 to reset. S2, start, S2, stop, reset. Or S, yeah, S3 is reset. So now, if we press S1 again, It'll bring us back into time. So, in the order, uh, we got time, we've got alarm, or we got time set, alarm set, countdown timer, and stopwatch. So now, we're going to teach you how to put it together. So here are all the components required for the, to put this kit together. You got your PCB, your three buttons, all of your resistors, your program microchip, and your socket, three double seven segment displays three headers, 
six transistors, seven transistors, sorry, your 5-volt regulator, your crystal oscillator, and your capacitors, and your LEDs that simulate the colons. So first of all, we're going to put together, the, or we're going to place our resistors and capacitors. We've got our seven 220 ohm resistors. Uh, they're current limiting resistors for the seven segment displays and our 5K1 resistor. We've got our single 10K resistor here, our two 2K resistors here, and our seven 1K resistors here that actually work along the base of each of these transistors. So next we're going to do the capacitors and the headers. Our three headers go here, here, and here. And we've got some ceramic capacitors. These ones are labeled 104. They go here and here. They're 100 nanofarad capacitors. Our two crystal oscillator capacitors go here and here. Now since these are ceramic capacitors, it doesn't matter which way you put them in. They're not electrolytic. I'll be putting the electro electrolytics in next. Now, we've got two electrolytics. Note that the positive of the electrolytic capacitor is the longer lead and that the negative is the shorter lead. There's two electrolytics on the board and you'll actually see a positive indicator on both of them. So always make sure to put the positive, the longer pin into the side with the positive indicator. Our 100 microfarad Electrolytic capacitors put placed here are 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors placed here. Now we've got seven transistors and one voltage regulator. Now this is something you got to take you got to be very careful with because on the board the default footprint is wrong. Don't follow the default pr footprint for the regulator. For the transistors, you'll know that there's a flat side of the footprint and a rounded side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that you place the flat side of the transistor facing the flat side on the footprint and the curved side on the curved side of the footprint. However, for the default uh, the default footprint for the regulator, which is the same package, uh, the regulator, by the way, is labeled 78LO5. You want to make sure that you follow. We've actually marked the, uh, we've marked the correct footprint. Place the flat side to the curved side of the original footprint. We basically want to reverse it. We've marked it the proper way on the kit. So we'll show you after we've placed these components. So we're almost done. We've got our buzzer, our three buttons, our crystal oscillator, and our four LEDs. So first of all, with the piezo buzzer, there's two leads. There's the positive and the negative. The positive is, lo is longer and should be placed on the indicated positive pin on the footprint. So place the longer lead on the positive side. For the LEDs, there's two pins on each LED. Like everything else, the longer pin is the positive. There is a positive indicator on each of these four LED footprints. Place the longer lead in the side facing the positive indicator. Buttons only go in one way, or rather, two ways. But you won't be they you won't be able to get you won't get the buttons wrong. Very very easy. They fit right in. Fit right into place, and fit right in the holes. You just have to push down. The crystal oscillator, not polarized, not electrolytic, not so you basically there's no polarization. You can put it in either way; it won't matter. So let's get soldering. Last assembly step: we've got three seven-segment displays or dual seven-segment displays. Use the little dot in the lower right corner as your indicator. Place them on the board like this with the dot in the lower right hand corner. Next we want to place our socket. If you'll notice on the board there's a little notch here indicating that that is the left side of the chip. There's a notch on the socket that you should that will pop that will just you don't need to necessarily follow this on the socket but it helps because there is a notch indicator on the socket so if you place it in uh, blocking the footprint, you'll be able to follow this notch to show you that this is the proper way to put the chip in because the chip itself has a notch that's supposed to go in this way. So let's uh, let's pop these in, solder them, and then power it up. Make sure that the notch in your chip is facing left. Make sure to remove the seal, or else you're not going to get a nice loud beep from your buzzer. Let's turn it on. Hallelujah! Thumbs up. Let's test the buttons. S1 successfully changes the function. S2 
successfully changes the hour, and S3 successfully changes the minute. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us. We can be reached at engineeringshock.com or electroniclessons.com. We've got tons of other awesome kits that we developed in-house, so please don't hesitate. Visit us, and uh, thanks again for watching, everybody.